Thank you. Um, yes, so in this um, uh, brief presentation today, I will um, briefly discuss um, the two main questions, actually. Uh, first of all, um, can, is it possible to imagine um, that uh, wildlife trafficking and poaching uh, can be qualified as a, a threat to, uh, to the peace for the purpose of the application of Article 39 of the UN Charter? Um, and on the other hand, is, it, is this qualification desirable? Um, what is the added value of this qualification for the repression of um, the transnational um, um, this transnational crime that is wildlife uh, trafficking. So, of course, I will focus on the transnational dimension of poaching and uh, wildlife trafficking today. Um, so, actually, the uh, Security Council already qualified uh, wildlife trafficking and poaching as a, a threat to the peace. And it did so in two resolutions from 2014. Uh, one is Resolution 2134, and the other one is Resolution 2136. They respectively concerned uh, the situation in the Central African Republic and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. But in this context, wildlife trafficking and poaching was qualified as a threat to international peace and security, but from uh, a specific perspective and in a specific meaning, um, because um, these activities were uh, considered threats only so far as they were used by armed groups active in this uh, region of the world uh, as a form of financing. So, um, and in this sense, um, 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 being uh, involved in activities of poaching and wildlife trafficking uh, was included in the listing criteria for targeted sanctions in this context. So we may um, consider uh, this uh, uh, qualification as part of um, a broader shift, a broader tendency of the, um, in uh, the uh, practice of the Security Council to um, increasingly consider uh, questions of human security. Um, why? Um, because wildlife trafficking and poaching are not simply threats to environmental integrity or to biodiversity. They are threats also to um, human security understood in, the, in a broader sense. And um, it's sufficient for me to recall that last, um, last September, the uh, United Nations General Assembly considered that um, trafficking um, in wildlife uh, is a serious threat um, also to the socioeconomic and political stability of affected states and regions, but also uh, to uh, the rule of law. And I should add that last uh, week, the um, United Nations um, uh, Office um, for uh, um, the United Nations Office on uh, Drugs and Crime uh, observed that uh, indeed uh, the um, illegal trade in uh, pangolin was probably one of the uh, causes for the transmission of COVID-19 to, um, uh, to the man from, from wild bats to, to man. So it can also become a health um, hazard and issue um, in, in some cases. So it's really a multifaceted and global risk that states need to address. And um, with this respect, I could also um, uh, would like also to point out that um, in in several um, uh, on several occasions, the Security Council has indeed uh, focused on various uh, forms of transnational organized crime, uh, qualifying them as a threat to international peace and security. So, for our purposes, and especially in relation to the question of whether the Security Council uh, could be able and would uh, qualify indeed wildlife trafficking as a threat to international peace and security in itself and not in relation to um, the uh, activities of armed groups for instance or as a finance a source of financial support for these groups but in itself um, is the consideration of a resolution 2240 uh, 2015 because this one this was one of the rare cases if not the only case where indeed the Security Council um, took into consideration uh, a specific uh, org form of transnational crime, which is um, actually two transnational crimes, human trafficking and um, the smuggling of migrants, and considered it as a threat to international peace and security in itself, not in relation to specific conflicts or the activities of uh, non-state uh, uh, groups. Um, 
However, it's difficult to infer from this resolution some general criteria that could be applied to wildlife trafficking, because the rationale for the qualification of uh, um, smuggling of migrants and human trafficking as a threat to peace here was the endangerment of lives of um, uh, victims of trafficking uh, or um, smuggled individuals. So it was a very specific situation and this of course is a, is a problem that affects all um, um, uh, transnational, the, the analysis of all transnational organized crime because each uh, of these crimes has specific characteristics that make it difficult um, to uh, make general points uh, from, uh, from this point of view. So um, it's at the same time if we observe the debates within the uh, UN Security Council we can also see that um, the question of wildlife trafficking has increasingly shifted into the background, not only in debates concerning the Central African Republic or the Democratic Republic of the Congo, but more generally, the framing of uh, uh, wildlife trafficking as a threat to the peace has incre increasingly shifted into the background of um, uh, debates within the Council. Uh, and um, in any case, we can, when we do find a discussion on this, it's always in relation, um, it, it, it's always concerning the framing of wildlife trafficking and transnational poaching as a source of financing for uh, the activity of armed groups. So um, at the same time, the uh, General Assembly of the United Nations is uh, paying attention to wildlife trafficking, but in a completely different um, um, perspective. Because um, um, on multiple occasions, the um, General Assembly has um, invited uh, states, uh, member states of the United Nations to uh, qualify wildlife trafficking as a serious crime in the sense understood by the uh, United Nations Convention on Transnational Organized Crime. So we can see that the perspective here is completely different because cooperation between states is encouraged in the framing of that specific convention. So at this point, we also want to ask, um, having understood that this qualification of wildlife trafficking and poaching as an independent, uh, as a threat to um, international peace and security in itself is unlikely in the near future, what would be the added value actually of this qualification, of this framing, vis-a-vis um, -vis, um, a, a more effective implementation of uh, the existing uh, international legal framework, not only the Convention on Transnational Organized Crime, but also the Convention on the International Trade of Endangered Species. And um, indeed, um, uh, I believe that uh, a stronger implementation of this uh, legal framework would be a more effective strategy uh, for uh, um, a comprehensive, uh, a more effective and comprehensive strategy for uh, the actual uh, repression of um, this trans transnational uh, crime. Um, to make my point, I will just uh, quickly refer to um, the um, uh, analysis uh, that some legal scholars have uh, carried out of uh, the um, um, South African legal system. Because in South Africa, the main problem, which is a country that is deeply affected by wildlife trafficking and, and poaching, of course, um, much of the problems in responding to this phenomenon are precise, precisely connected to uh, the um, difficulties uh, to um, uh, establish extraterritorial jurisdiction over such offenses. So um, I believe that um, the um, uh, Convention on Transnational Organized Crime would actually uh, help if correctly uh, implemented, I mean, if implemented so as to include wildlife trafficking within its scope of application, would actually provide states with uh, effective tools of, uh, of um, uh, repression, especially just by way of example, I may refer to the fact that uh, Article 16, Paragraph 4 of the Convention allows uh, states to use the Convention as grounds for extradition or um, Article 18, which uh, establishes a, a wide um, a duty of cooperation between states uh, in relation not only to uh, search and seizure, but also to cooperation in relation to uh, other aspects uh, of uh, um, uh, concerning uh, exercise of jurisdiction. Um, so um, in, in conclusion, um, the um, 
increase the militarization that may come from a qualification of uh, uh, wildlife trafficking as a threat to international peace or even the adoption of targeted sanctions is just a, a limited uh, approach. Um, it suffice to refer to the fact that um, the uh, main effect that the resolutions I was referring to at the beginning of my presentation uh, in relation um, there was, uh, was indeed um, the uh, um, uh, adoption only uh, for uh, the uh, Central African Republic of targeted sanctions um, towards uh, individuals and entities uh, which among many other offenses had committed wildlife trafficking but by no means were exclusively devoted to wildlife uh, trafficking. Um, so I will, uh, I will conclude here. Thank you.